when you say high school, <laughs> is that just 13 and up? Yeah, it's a year 7 to 12 school. Okay. So it goes so 12 to 18 year olds. Yeah, um, it's yeah. it's only new humanitas. It was founded by myself and my partner and um, a bunch of teachers and parents who are amazing from our community from Pine. Uh, that's never been in Pine's been around for 40 years and it's right. never been something that the community has strongly wanted a high school experience because our kids tend to really do well when they transition right. to other environments. <laughs> they enjoy that experience. They have a lot of success and enjoy lots of the aspects of moving to different environments. Mm -hmm. But my own children, uh, they, wanted a, they wanted a democratic high school. And my partner, who, Patrick, who's the principal at Humanitas, he'd worked at Pine, but he'd also worked for 20 years in high schools mm. as a mainstream principal, deputy principal, head of curriculum, all sorts of things. And he loved that work. He was really excellent mm. with teenagers, but he saw a real strong, really strong need because teenagers are delightfully polite, for, polite about being bored in right, their right, classrooms. Right. They'll sit there and be disengaged, but not say anything for several years. And so he really wanted to offer that to the world as well. So we got together with a bunch of people. It's not directly, it's a separate school to Pine sure. mm -hmm. um, because we're doing things a little bit different, but we have a really strong and friendly relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's in an inner city school. So it's, mm. we just, we deliberately decided to be right in the center of the city so that we can get everywhere, go everywhere, go. We have wonderful relationships with art galleries and museums mm. and workshops. And so it's a really fantastic place. As well. nice, I, nice. I'm there how, one day a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How big is the Humanitas? At the moment, we have 60 students okay. because we started, we've only, we're three years old and we started with year sevens and then we've been adding and next year we'll have our, our seniors and we'll grow to 120. Wow. Okay. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty neat. Absolutely. Yeah. And then that, that seems to be kind of how things go is, you know, you, you don't have it till you need it and then then you off you go <laughs> yeah. it's australia is a very tricky um, climate with the government accreditation mm. and paperwork we have yeah. a lot of very very strict requirements which is a good thing in many ways we want really high standards for our schools we want them to be working to the best they can be but it can mean particularly in queensland that you have to be extremely dedicated to paperwork in order mm. to get innovative curriculum passed. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. have to have someone who gatekeeps and is willing to do that and go to, in order for the teachers and the students to have this really rich and innovative program, uh, somebody has to do the work to, to map all that to the nuts and bolts that's required. So a lot mm -hmm. of people do shy away from making innovative schools because of that. Um, right, some of us right. just are a bit more... <laughs> bit more dedicated <laughs> right right, to the right. Bits. <laughs> yeah yeah well i mean it, it it makes sense that it comes out of one a long history in a particularly democratic school but then but then seeing you know the, if the kids are asking for it then you you have a grounding that then you can you know know how to navigate the system you know yeah. he's, he, he has some experience with navigating that so so it sounds like some yeah. things came together that really made it it did. And I mean, I've always been of the opinion that fine is not good enough. Like I don't want yeah. my kids to just have fine. They could have great, they could have joy, they could have really great experiences. So that's, that's a bit of a driver for me. I, right I notice on. you do a lot of work with joy and that's huge yeah. for us. Like joy's big, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. joyful spaces. Yeah. 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 And that's, that's sort of the, the grounding for me is, my, you know, I have a degree in psychology, so it's really looking at it through that lens and yeah. saying, okay, for me, it was so I homeschooled other people's kids for about five years. And so I, I did. And, and it was consensus run small group. So it was kind of a democratic school. and I didn't know that existed yet. <laughs> and so so it was really my vision was, you know, joyful or it was it was enthusiastic students um, working with, you know, uh, passionate teachers in a joyful school. And so I realized that that in a lot of ways, those are kind of nebulous terms. And so psychology was my, my way to put a more precision on what does that mean? Mm -hmm. How do you get that? What does that, you know, do? This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible 
is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Burr.